Even when they set their trials. Good night, good night, good night. Thank you so much for this welcome. Thank you so, so much. Let me recognize Will Boss, my Prime Minister, Honorable Dr. Skerritt, and all his wife, Melissa Skerritt, also the PAL Rep for the Roseau Central constituency, my other cabinet colleagues, and all my other candidates here tonight. Welcome to everyone, and welcome to all of you from the other constituencies, and a special welcome to all of you from the Rozo Valley. Thank you so much for being here. We've braved the weather. Against all odds, we're here tonight. But that's what the valley is about, rain. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings. Now, let, but it, as I said, it's really my pleasure to be here tonight. And um, let me just get straight into it. This is a serious time. This is crunch time. And we have to make a decision based on our observations, what has happened, and our experiences. Sometimes, every time we talk about Hurricane Maria, they said, what, you're going to repeat Hurricane Maria again? But that is our history. It happened. We cannot run away from our history. Marcus Garvey told you, a people without their history is like a tree without roots. Maria was there. It destroyed 226% of our GDP. Our housing stock was gone. There was no even crop assessment. Everything was gone. But what did we do? We bounced back. We bounced back. We did it better and we did it stronger. And that is what we've done. When Hurricane Maria passed, I thought, wow, things looking tight. Only to hear my prime minister and my leader talking about a climate resilient country. When the rest of the world totally blank about these things, and that is the level we took it for in Dominica. Dominicans, you should be proud. This is the country you belong to. A country that when external shocks can come, we can bounce back better, and we can build stronger, and we can decide that we're going to be the first climate resilient country in the world. That is something you should pat your back and beat your chest. This is the sort of country that you're from. A country that doesn't fall down. A country that stands back up regardless of the tribulations that we can face. But also, we have to recognize that going to be the first climate resilient country in the world and what it means for us. There are just two countries that have a disaster res um, resilient strategy. Dominica is one of them. We have Creed. We have the... Um, the Climate Resilience Execution Agency of Dominica. Not many people, not many countries have those things. And you have to recognize it goes beyond those things. We have the hydroelectricity. Now we're going to be producing 30% of our power from hydroelectricity. And when I tell you those things, you don't have to believe me. Go and see for yourself. We don't just tell you things just like that. You go and let your eyes boil your peas and you go and see what's happening for hydroelectricity in Trafalgar. And that's going to happen very soon for our Padu power station. All the pipes have been run. So this is what we're about. This month, we'll be drilling for geothermal energy. That is what we're about. We're not just giving you stories. You go and see for yourself. This is what our government is all about. We're thinking of the future. This is what other islands would love to be. So then again, pat your back, beat your chest, you are from the great commonwealth of Dominica. And you have to be proud. You must, get, you must be proud about those things. Not only that, when we do things as a government, we make sure that it's across the board. Equal opportunity for everybody. So in our climate resilience, when we are building houses, the common man can get the same climate resilient house that somebody else can build in whatever neighborhood with their loan or their mortgage. Everybody gets the same thing. That is what this government is about, a government of class. It's all shall eat, but all shall eat equally. So it doesn't mean that you cannot afford a climate resilient house, you won't get one. We are well on our way. We are almost 2,000 houses that have been given to families, climate resilient houses. So everybody gets the same treatment. That is what your government is all about. You should be proud about those things. 
pat your back and beat your chest. You're from the Commonwealth of Dominica. That is how we do it in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Everybody must get equal opportunity. Let alone housing. You have to look at the bigger picture also, even in education. So in education, when I left high school, about 50 of us went to Sifo Call. It wasn't the Dominica State College then. Now, at our Dominica State College, we have almost 2,000 students having associate degrees and BSc bachelor's degrees. It wasn't always so. Some of you who are younger think it was like that. It was not always so. When I was there, just 50 of us. Now we have a government that can have a state college with 2,000 students. You have to be proud. This is the country you're from. The Commonwealth of Dominica, it only happens here. Beat your shoulder, beat your chest. You have to be proud. This is the country you're from. This is the envy of other countries in the region. The envy. Not many countries can do it the way we do it, but we do it well and we do it properly. You must also be proud and you have to look at the, what we've done. So we have here, in terms of, we have a policy. We want to have every house, every house should have a graduate. We've reached that milestone. Some of them are lagging behind, but in majority, we've reached. Some even have two in their households. Now, this is how we empower people. Whether it's in housing, whether it's in education, this is what your government is doing for you. You have every reason to be proud of what this government is doing for you. You have every reason to walk with your head high because you're from the Commonwealth of Dominica. That is how we do it here. This is the most productive government you can get in the region. And you can walk with your head high because this is the country that you belong to. You see, and this is because we put people first. This is what this government is about. We put people first. So here comes COVID-19. We didn't panic. No, we did not panic. Our prime minister, as our leader, we put things together, we sat together, and we decide how are we going to handle COVID-19. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. Can you imagine this small island developing state is the first island in the Caribbean to have the capacity to do PCR testing for COVID. You have to be proud as Dominicans. This is the country you belong to. The country that does things first in the region. We were the first to get vaccines as well until we could give other islands vaccines. This is the country you belong to. You have to be proud. This is the country you have to continue on this track of development. And let me tell you, Sometimes we make it look easy, but it's not as easy as you may think. So can you imagine, here we are as a government, just came in in December 6, 2019. First thing on our chest, COVID-19. Okay, very well. So we sit, we plan. To the extent that we do testing in every little village in Dominica, because we put you, the people, first. We've been putting you first and we'll continue to put you first all the time. Can you imagine? So we test you. We pay taxi to bring you to Portsmouth. We treat you free of charge. We pay taxi to bring you back at your home. Where else in the world that happens? You have to be proud. This is a government that is taking care of you. You must be proud of Dominicans that you are part of a country, a government that is taking care of its people. These are things you have to be proud of. And this is what this election is about, for this to continue, because we cannot take chances, and we will not take chances. So, and then you have to look at it further. But before I go further on that point, let me just thank all my healthcare workers. All my healthcare workers, you did a great job. You sacrificed. You went out there against all odds and you kept Dominica safe. We didn't do it alone. The healthcare workers were there with us. We did it together. Now, 
we have to recognize all that is because we had planning. We planned before, that's why we were the first to do PCR testing in the Caribbean. And we continue, I will admit, there is always work to be done. There is always work to be done. We cannot fool ourselves and think it's all over. There's always room for improvement. So just two weeks ago, we had Accreditation Canada at our Dominica China Friendship Hospital. What are we doing? We're setting up the quality standards of our hospital. Rome wasn't built in a day. Step by step, that is how we get in there. The sad part is, sometimes when something goes wrong, something negative, and it might not even be a human error, it gets spread all over the place. What about the hundreds and the thousands that pass through our hospital and our health center? Everything goes fine and nobody's talking. They just choose the one or two now and then. We have to be reasonable, my people. We cannot keep criticizing our country. That's for the other side. That's not us. We don't do this. We build up our country. That is who we are. That is what we do. We should be proud as Dominicans. And we can go on and on. Why? Look at health. Look at the amount we have invested in primary health care. Look at all the different clinics that we're building all over the country. A bigger country like Barbados with quarter million people. They have about seven or eight polyclinics. Little Dominica, we're on 13 going and two more to come. And that is not just wooden little plywood structures. These are climate resilient, proper health centers. That is what we are building. So that anybody in the rural areas, you go to these health centers, you can get an ECG. These are things a couple years ago never existed. A couple years ago, you could only do blood tests in Rosu. Now you can do it in Portsmouth. A couple years ago, we didn't have the capacity to do all those things at the Marigot Hospital. Very soon, all that will be done. We are decentralizing health. And it's done in a climate resilient manner. This is the country you're part of. This is the country you belong to. You should be proud of this, Dominica proud of yourself. This is your country. Now, apart from that, even now while I'm speaking, a credit, um, Paho is here and we're setting the reset button. Just like the Prime Minister set the reset button for another five years to just get things done and 10 years and 15 years. We're here with Paho. We plan. We think ahead and we're finalizing the blueprint for our, for our health system as we go along. Because COVID-19 came, it taught us a lesson. So we have to be pragmatic, we have to adjust, and we have to train, and we have to change things, and that is what we do as a government. We're not just stable there. We don't sleep on ourselves. We're thinking two, three steps ahead. That is who we are. And you have to be proud when you have a government like that in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Now, as a matter of fact, talking about resilience, Two weeks ago, the OAS was here. The OAS came down to have a high-level meeting on resilience. And where else would they choose but the Commonwealth of Dominica? Everyone else from the region was here. And we were teaching them what resilience is all about. Teaching them what resilience. And they were all just lost the kind of things we are doing in terms of resilience. And they could only hear it from the Commonwealth of Dominica. This is the country you belong to. You should be proud of the Commonwealth of Dominica. They came here to hear our stories. And not only that, when you look at what we've done, presently our life expectancy has gone up. 70 for men, 75 for women. And there are certain other indicators where we made tremendous progress. So for instance, in maternal mortality, over the past five years, there has not been one maternal mortality case in Dominica. And can you imagine, according to the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, the United Nations WO set, that target was supposed to have been reached in 2030. We reached that target five years ago. This is your country. This is why you have to be proud of your government and your country. You can walk with your head high. This is the sort of country you come from, and it's because of a government that can run a country that way. You have to be proud. Also, 
from our Anwaku, there are only two countries in the region, only two, and Dominica is one of them. When you look about elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV, there are only six of us in the entire region of the Americas. Antigua, St. Kitts, Anguilla, I think Barbados, Dominica, and one more. This is your country. This is what other countries would love to be like. And you are part of this. You can walk with your head high because you're from the Commonwealth of Dominica. That is it. You're from the Commonwealth of Dominica. Also, in terms of neonatal mortality, it is down, it was seven, it's presently 7.6 per 100,000. But now this is down 50% from where it was five years ago. Constant progress we keep making. If you talk about infant mortality, we are down 40% compared to two years ago where we were. This is the different progress we're making. That cervical cancer is on the downward trend here. And you have to appreciate our health staff. Can you imagine we have a COVID-19 pandemic? We have online learning. How do we get the immunizations up? Our staff still did it, that we are leading in HPV vaccine for our grade six students in the entire region. You have to be proud about those things. In spite of all of this, we were 90% of our grade six students that we did. But we have to be honest, we are the burden of chronic non-communicable diseases. It's not unique to Dominica, it's all over the region, all over the world. And we are going to tackle it head on. We are going to handle this head on to the extent that we are even appointed a coordinator. That is how serious we take these things. And you see, that is the planning that the Labour Party government brings to things. We see it coming. We're not going to sit down. We're not sleeping ourselves. We plan ahead. That is why power was here. We planned ahead and we will attack it head on. We don't run away from our challenges. We don't run away. We face our challenges and we tackle them head on. But I could go on and on and on. But considering time and the weather, although we got a good break, let me tell you a little bit about my Rose Valley with our villages. So for instance, in Mount Prosper, what have we done in Mount Prosper? We have this water system we're setting up. And when this is complete, we have our tank, we have the pumping from water to be able to come up. When this is complete, we will obviously see the benefits in terms of agriculture and irrigation. This is what planning is all about. We have the complete fencing of our basketball court and our school compound, safety for our children, all that in one prospect. We have also started the overbridge road so that our farmers can get access. And sometimes you hear them talk about, oh, no feeder roads and all of that. No, we are having millions of dollars being spent all over the country for feeder roads. They never mention those things. But you can let your eyes boil your peas and go and see for yourself. These are the things we are doing there. Now also in housing, quite a few of the houses have been built in one prospect. Those who haven't had yet, their turn will come. Bit by bit, step by step, everybody will be taken care of. It's a gradual process. Everybody will be taken care of. In Watton Waven. I know we have to do the road in Watton Waven, but we gave it preference, and it's on this year's budget, the Watton Raven Road by Castle to get done, and that will be done in this financial year. So it's not like we forgot in the Watton Waven Road. No, we know it has to be done, and it will be done because it is in this year's budget. Also, for instance, our lovely school in Watton Waven. You have to see our school in Watton Waven, state of the art. These are the schools we build for our children. That is how it's done in the Commonwealth of Dominica. No longer those days where the private schools were a little more upstander than the public schools. No. Look at the sort of schools we are building all over the country. Watton Waven is no exception. Proper washroom facilities, proper kitchen. Our children are comfortable. The Dominica Labour Party does it with class. That is what we are about. We are a party of class. We do things because we feel people. We put people first. That's how we function. And then let alone that, our playing field in Watton Waven. I know it has, it has to be done. But we prioritize. Is it my priority now? I would rather prioritize the housing, the road for Watton Waven. Your playing field will come. 
It's just a matter of time. The same way you manage your finances as a home is the same way we manage our finances as a government. It will come, just have patience. But it's on the radar, we are aware of it. We are not sleeping on us with those developmental programs. But if we were to move, and obviously we have to deal with the land situation, what we even, and that's on the agenda, it will be done. You come across to Trafalgar, you see our resource center. This resource center will be used as a digital hub, a digital hub to train our young people so they can get into the digital economy and they can work within the digital economy and can even work in for companies abroad. This is how we do it. This is what the Labour Party and this government is all about. We do things high level, we do things high standards because we put people first. And you should be proud, proud to be part of this Commonwealth of Dominica. That is your country. You can walk with your head high anywhere in the world. This is the country of form. We are first in so many things. That is how we are. Now, also in Trafalgar, we have the housing project going on. We have a first set of houses in Lily Valley. We build a second set of houses in Lily Valley. We're going to get our indoor basketball court there as well. So every village within the Rose Oak Valley constituency is taken care of. We upgraded all our tourism sites there as well. And then also our health center in Trafalgar. We have a smart health center. I tell you, we always put people first. That is how we do things. You, have to be co you are comfortable because you have a government that puts you first. Now, if we were to go to Loda, and we have the geothermal drilling going to start very soon, and we have the aerial tram project going on as well, and we have our hotel in Providence being built as well, all that is within Loda. I know we have to get the playing field done, but we will prioritize. To me, I would rather focus on housing, geothermal, aerial tram, the playing field will come. It's just a matter of priorities first. What is most important for you, this is what we are dealing with. We may not be able to get everything at one time, but eventually it will come. That is what planning, that is what a good government does. They plan and they prioritize. That is how we do things in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Then also, if we were to move a little further, then we'd consider, you know, if you were to go in the valley, any day, on a working day, it's like a ghost town. Everybody is working. Struggling to get people to work on NEP. They have advanced. They're working in the aerial tram. They're working geothermal. They're in small business. The valley during the day is a ghost town. Everybody is employed. Everybody is employed. This is what the development of the Rose Valley is about. Whether you're farming, whether you're a tourist vendor, whether you work in aerial tram, you work in geothermal, you're doing small business, everybody is working. This is the government you're from. This is the country you belong to. You have to be proud to be a Dominican tonight. Now, Coptal, we had a lot of works in Coptal. All our drainage works we did in Coptal. And the Coptal people are very pleased. We spent, what, close to $20 million dollars getting all the roads done in Coptal and all the drainage tributaries to the main drain. You have to look at those things. All that is part of our resilience. So nowhere was left out. Our Cabernet wall, close to $2 million for the safety of our people. But that was dealt with. And this is all part of our resilience strategy, all part of us being safe, all part of a government that has a plan. This is a government that has a plan, and you have to recognize this. No. We have also so many small businesses going on in the Roseau Valley. Many small businesses in the Roseau Valley. And you know, sometimes there are some, I, I, don't know, I mean, two nights ago, I asked the young lady, well, what's happening and stuff, you know? There's an opening somewhere, and maybe we could get you under the NEP to work in it. Say, no, doc, I do my small business. Ask another one, no, doc, I do my small business. This is the stage we've reached in the Roseau Valley. Small business booming. So many of us have gotten the grants from this small business unit. This is how the Rose Valley has been bubbling and moving along. And obviously here we are in Cochrane. And in Cochrane, we know what football and sports means to Cochrane. And then obviously just one, well, actually a few days ago, I was up here to give the Cochrane Football Academy $15,000 to get lights 
for their playing field. Because the intention is to have this playing field here brought up to FIFA standards, international standards, so we can have national games in Cochrane. This is the bigger picture. This is the vision that we have for our different villages and hamlets. And we know what Rabbit Festival means to Cochrane, and that is on the go. COVID kept us down for two years, but that's not going to prevent us and stop us from getting our Rabbit Festival back. And as I said before, Rome wasn't built in the day, so we have to be patient, step by step. And that is why we have to, it's progress versus perfection. Let us go for progress. Let us make some progress every time. We're not going to kill ourselves for perfection in one thing. We just have to keep making progress every time. And that is what your government is doing every single time we're making progress step by step for you, the people of Dominica. And you have to be proud when you have such a government in power. That is the only government that can do is a Dominica Labour Party government. Do not take chances. Be proud. Work with your head up because you're from a country that is first in so many things in the region. You have, you have so much to be proud of. You must be proud. Now, you have to look at all of this is happening in the most difficult times. Most difficult times. We were born from Erica, we were born from Maria. COVID came, it could keep us down. We were born from COVID. War in Ukraine came, it can't keep us down. Inflation, it cannot keep us down. With all of this going on, the Commonwealth is bubbling with activity. This is the country we belong to. That's not happening in other islands. It's just in the Commonwealth that is bubbling with all these different projects. Whether it's the road coming to Cassibus to come to Kalinago territory, whether it's the road from Lai River coming up to Sultan, whether it's the Bagatelle to Lubia Road that will be built. You see all these schools being built all over the island, health centers being built all over the islands, hospitals being built all over the islands, our digital economy is thriving and moving forward, and all those, our aerial tram, our geothermal, and scholarships our students still continue that they can study abroad. Granted, some of them could have been paid late, but we pay it nonetheless. We always pay it. And even when we have all these external shocks, we always service our debts and our loans properly as a government. This is responsible governance. This is the country that you're from. This is the government that you have. You must be proud of your government. Walk with your head high. Beat your shoulder, beat your chest. This is the Commonwealth of Dominica that you're from. Now, also, you have to understand, let us do all of this. We're making so much other progress. But time is limited, but making so much other progress. You can look at agriculture. We just set up our new fisheries in Marigot and in Roseau. We have this new science agriculture lab in Portsmouth. That is what planning and thinking is all about. We know what climate change is all about. We know about the food chain. We know about food security. That is why we have such things that we can handle the new diseases and the new strains and we can be more scientific and be more productive as an agricultural country. All these feeder roads. And you see, we have a plan. And we have a plan, that is why we are building Dominica. On the other side, there's no plan, so they cannot build. Let alone plan, so they don't have a contractor, they don't have a leader. So there'll be no building going on, so do not take a chance. You have a government with a plan, and with a plan, we can build. If you don't have a plan, you cannot build. Their plan is just to get up every morning and criticize this beloved country of ours. How can someone get up every day and just criticize in their own country? That is unheard of. That is too much negativity. But we are above those things. But you see, and what I'm saying here is, you have to recognize the sort of candidates that we're bringing to you. The candidates that we bring to you, these are professionals, comfortable, let alone educated, they are knowledgeable. Because my father always say common sense masters education. They have the knowledge. They know how to handle things, comfortable in their professions. You have permanent secretaries, you have pediatricians, you have engineers, you have chief fisheries officers. That is the class and the quality of candidates we bring for you. 
That is the class and quality. And then when you put all of that with the best leader in the world, nothing can touch us. Nothing can touch us. That is what the Labour Party is all about. This is what you have. You should be happy. You should be proud. This is yours. This is your Labour Party. This is your country. Walk with your head high. This is the country you come from. Dominica. You walk anywhere and your head high. You say, yes, this is, I'm a Dominican. You should feel proud. That is the country you're from. Now, you have to, there's the old part. Be just proud about being Dominican. But you have to play your part. You have to assume responsibility. And you have to assume positive intent. Do not just go down this negative way like the other side. You have to look, as our Prime Minister says repeatedly, look at the glass half full, not half empty. Have a positive state of mind. Don't get up like them and criticize your country every day. Do not stoop that low. You are from the Commonwealth. You are led by a Dominican Labour Party government that is doing everything for you. You have everything to be proud about tonight. And to be... And you, you should be proud that you're part of this movement. This is a movement to develop your country, to develop Dominica. You are part of this. You have to be happy that you're part of this movement that is developing Dominica. And between you and my, the most, in, well, yes, actually maybe the most, the point that caught me so much about this Dominica Labour Party is we always put God and the people first. We always put God and the people first. That is why they cannot touch us. Because God have our back and we have your back. So you have to be proud about all those different things. And you see, I always keep telling you that let us stay positive. Do not get distracted by the negativity of the other sides. And those listening at home on the different social media platforms. There is no us and them. There is no us and them. Don't let them fool you. There is us and them. We are all in this together. We are all Dominicans. The same roads we drive on, the same schools we go to, the same health centers we go to. We are all in this together. There is no us and them. So even if you are at home, even if you balance in and you are trying to figure it out, even if you had a little scuffle and a disagreement with one of us, put that aside. Put Dominica first and do the right thing. We are all in this together. There's no us and there's no them. We are all Dominica. We're doing that for Dominica. So those of you at home, this is a special message to you. This is beyond little party politics. This is about our country and we have to make the right decisions for our country. No. And you, when we look at it, well, you realize the future is very bright for us. Very, very bright for us. Because we have a Dominican Labour Party government that has been delivering to us time and time again. You have two things to do. When you leave here tonight, tell your friends and your families and your neighbor why they should be proud that they are Dominicans and they are part of this country. After all what I've explained to you, you, have, you can walk with your head high, I keep telling you. You're from a great country. You have a country that the government is taking care of its people, and you should not take a chance. And we have on our shirts, labor is still the best choice. The point is there's no other choice. There's no other option. It's only labor we have. It's only labor we know. It's only labor that has been delivering. If we do not have labor, we dead. This is serious. And then the second thing you have to do when you leave here is on the 6th of December, make sure you get up early. Let us return the Dominican Labour Party government in power. This is the government that has been taking care of us. This is the government that has made us proud as Dominicans. This is the government that has us with our head high. The government that other countries envy how we do things in Dominica. Whether it's housing, education, resilience, health, name it. This government has made you, the people of Dominica,
wrong. So, my dear friends, it was so nice engaging you here tonight. I'm just so happy to be here. Showers of blessing come December 6th. Let's do it together. Labor! Labor! I thank you. I love you. I love you. Even when they said their time, they just get